Years later, is it serious where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up? Today's episode will be on Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It was released on August 5th, 2011. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> Thursday. What year? No. What year is it? Jesus! <laughs> the final video of the planet of the eight series and franchise that i'm gonna be talking about and because it is a trilogy i'm talking about all the movies in one alongside with the years later episode because i do think most people do praise this trilogy and i just wanted to see if it was as good as people made it out to be and just comparing it to you know the first one and it's four sequels and the 2001 remake this is a second reimagining and second take of this franchise which is not really new to say because things always get remade now and reimagined nowadays so it's like yeah it's just another another different take for this franchise so let's start with the rise of the planet of the apes what they like immediately is their rise which is why hence it's called rise of the planet of the apes this is the rise of the apes because of their intelligence and because of caesar himself he's the one intelligent ape and so it's like you know what to not feel lonely and know his place in society he decides to make his other apes very smart and because of this it leads to some bigger consequences than just very smart apes running around san francisco the human element of this movie which i was surprised there was i mean there had to be at least a human element in the first one because how are these apes gonna get introduced but james Franco is the caretaker for Caesar, the zoo or testing facility, and this ape goes ape crazy. And uh, it turns out this ape just had a baby, a ape infant, and they had to kill his ape. It was going all crazy, and so James Franco decided to test on it, or not test on it. They tested on that mother ape. This ape was born from her, so he inherits her intelligence, and so he raised him like a son, essentially. This relationship between James Franco and Caesar, the father and son, because he's been with him and his family for what well, feels like seven years now, in terms of timeline-wise, and he's grown up kind of like an adolescent, I think adolescent, right, around that age. And I guess jumping right into the end when he has to let him go and live his own life because he takes him to the wood every now and then and it's like that's where he should be in his element just kind of climbing exercising but at home near society with James Franco and his family he doesn't really seem to know his place I mean he knows his place in this household right but anywhere else he doesn't really know and he has these thoughts because he is very different from the other apes and so when they both have to say goodbye to each other near the end it's essentially a parent letting go of their kid sending him off to college and being like all right go live your life now you know I will work this hard to raise you or not I was for you to go out venture out and hopefully succeed in life and that's what i took away from that james franco and caesar that ending scene letting him go go out in the woods be a part of the san francisco woods and whatnot and having to let go essentially letting them live their life there's this drug that they test out on his mother and then james franco's testing it out proving to the people in the higher ups be like hey we can have these apes be intelligent and smart and, make, and possibly just talk he gets rejected because he seems like a ridiculous idea i think my favorite moment is when caesar stands up for himself against harry potter kid not harry potter kid what's his name julian from the flash season three and he's also from Harry Potter, but we sent that friend. So when he says that moment was a very powerful, awesome moment. Seeing him speak for the very first time, so cool, so scary. How he's able to talk, I'm assuming because of genes and science and all that stuff and rebelling against the human being being mistreated in the zoo. I'm assuming it just encouraged him up to be like, speak the movie even explains it, but it's just kind of, I guess it's just kind of like the effects of being intelligent, learning to speak eventually, kind of like we did. Humans just started talking gibberish at the beginning of time and we're just learning to speak English and old English, new English, different languages. So I guess that's that makes sense. I've always wondered like, wait, how do you speak? I'm assuming it's just like the progression of being smart and learning how to speak by reading books and whatnot, or just experiencing life, interacting with people, society. And then I also really like that, you know, Caesar does bring up, he does think about where his placement is in society. When he goes to the zoo and see animals being in cage, he questions like, is that imprisonment, being enslaved as a pet or living free as an animal? Like stuff like that, where it's like things are being questioned, see whether it is right or wrong, or is it like a gray area? You know, should zoos keep these animals encaged? Should they tame an animal that they can't really tame? because of the Harry Potter character. What's his name? You no, know, this actor from Flash season three and Harry Potter, all right? Because of the mistreatment of that, Caesar does make up his mind being like, yeah, th this sucks. You know, this, this isn't our place. You know, our place is that we should stand up for ourselves, be free, and don't be enslaved by these leashes. And then once they are free, it's a really like, I think my favorite part, or well, aside from the no, is them being loose and free in San Francisco, going to the Golden Gate Bridge throughout the cities and tall buildings. Like, I don't know, that sight and just seeing that in film, I just think it's interesting, just kind of cool. 
cool. Apes running away, or not, I guess running away from their cages, kind of letting loose, not really hurting. He, okay, I guess they are. Like, this is one moment on the bridge where Caesar's like, you think he's gonna kill this guy? But he just kind of walks away, but then another ape just comes and be like, fuck you. He just pushes it. Pretty comedic sort of moment. It was supposed to be kind of dire, but I was like, that was hilarious. Them pushing that big ass bus so they don't get hit by the guns and seeing Caesar on that horse for the first time, like, stuff like that is just cool. I don't know. I just think it was a really cool scene. Them being free in San Francisco, wreaking havoc, telling everyone else, let us go, let us be free. And if you don't bother us, we won't bother you. So in terms of the first entry of this trilogy, I thought it was pretty damn good, which is really good because it is the little arise. Caesar sees the mistreatment of animals and more specifically apes be treated like slaves being in cage, like pets, and questions where he is and his other fellow apes are at in society and decides, you know what? Screw this. We need to stand up for ourselves. And they do. And they let their, you know, presence known throughout the whole world being like, yeah, hey, this is us. Accept it, essentially. And, you know, the consequences of that would be, you know, you know, later find out in Dawn and War. But, you know, seeing the little rise throughout the streets of San Francisco, seeing this human connection with Caesar. Caesar so far seems to be conflicted as to what to do because he has this human connection with James Franco's character, but also wants his ape to be free. So, in this film, he has to choose one side, but it's also like, maybe, you know, in, in the next two sequels, maybe you can, you know, learn a little with each other, you know? Not fight with them or whatnot. And then because of this one guy, so this is one character who, like, costs all blood as well, and he's the one that spreads the virus, but I'm assuming because of the apes letting out, being let go, most of the masses are gonna blame the ape for this virus, this outbreak, this pandemic, but it's just one guy with a bloody nose, he's going to, like, airport, coughing everywhere, and spreading the virus, like, the virus in real life. But Rise of the Planet of the Apes, so far, the start of this trilogy, starting off pretty damn good. Ready and be gone. Three years later, in 2014, the second entry and sequel to Rise was released, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and this one definitely has that post-apocalypse feel to it because most of the human population are not there no more because of this virus, but I'm assuming most of the people are like off-screen, they probably apes, you know, started this virus and everything, and it's somewhat true because Caesar kind of spreads it with this gas thing as well, but most of San Francisco looks in shambles, trees are growing on buildings and whatnot, the apes are living in the wood, they're living in their elements and whatnot, while humanity has to suffer because because they can't survive off of, you know, living out in the land or whatnot. They, they need housing, homes, and all that stuff. And they don't have that. Humans, the remaining ones, they decide to trespass the apes' territory because they need to restore the power. The apes have, you know, again, they don't need power. They need power to, I don't know, eat some food and cost them for some help. So the remaining sort of survivors, the one main character is Malcolm and his family, but it's all I really care about. And Ricardo Diaz from Arrow Season 6 and 7, but he's kind of like the catalyst for this movie as well. And also another ape named Koba. So the big main takeaway from Dawn is the fact that there really can be no peace between humanity and apes like they try very hard so you know they come to an agreement to be like stay away from our territory Malcolm goes there alone be like we need to restore power to the city can you help us and so within this time frame apes and humans they start bonding with each other it's like hey you know what maybe they could live coincide with each other you know I think Malcolm's wife is a doctor saves and heals Caesar's wife and whatnot and they do that vice versa but they will never truly be peace because there's always will be one character or one person on both sides where they don't see eye to eye and that's where you know war starts essentially between the two both fears from both species their fears of each other come up to the surface when there's no more trust and that's essentially what happens everything's going fine and the power is somewhat restored or one it's almost restored but then goddamn ricardo diaz just has to be there be like hate for apes as their evidence and so he gets kicked out and then on the ape side this ape named koba he says you know what screw this we're gonna start a war and so there's this hilarious scene with the koba like acting like drunk with these two humans hanging out with them he grabs a gun and just kills them and then he shoots caesar as well burns down all of you know the logs and trees and whatnot and just claims that you know what there's no way for peace to be made between humanity or apes we need to be the dominant sort of species because they will also enslave us just like they did 10 you know 20 years ago and so both these sort of mentalities and persons these are the catalyst to what you know sort of creates this kind of war it just shows that there can never truly be peace within these two species because there's always going to be conflicts arguments different ideals different type of mentalities different fears and just hate you know just for reasons or even no reason i mean there was a reason Carl Diaz hates the apes because the you know virus and all that stuff that was a very good reason why Koba hates humanity of being in cage in a zoo and in cage for like so long so both sides i get the arguments but i don't think they can never truly put aside our differences because of just real like strong hatred towards each other malcolm and his family just like with james frigo in the first one he's the human element the human side that bonds with caesar and some of the apes they take him they heal him because Koba thinks he's killed him and Koba himself 
himself is like basically worse than both apes and humans because one of his own kind because they don't follow his orders stuff like that and this movie also like this first and second film also very resemblance of the first couple of movies of those you know five movies it's here that caesar realizes like yeah hey both humanity and apes are, are evil they can both be corrupted and messed up so essentially it's like maybe they're you know we could come together and find like a middle ground but that won't be possible because by the end when power is restored one of the other humans who i'm assuming is a scientist he decides to contact the military for help and you know claims that the apes are, are killer apes you know like these apes will just kill because they are apes they know nothing more because of that message and that mentality it sets up for war in the next movie even when caesar realizes like hey maybe we could both come together it doesn't really matter by the end the military is gonna come every time it seems like in this movie closer and closer to finding peace within the two species something happens ape gets shot by you know a gun or one ape thinks he can rule all or a human calls for military help claiming that these apes would just be apes nothing more so again conflict different ideal there would never truly be peace sadly that's kind of like a pipe dream there won't be because every human and ape are different and there's no way some people put away their hatred or differences to other things or persons or species kind of have the, the showdown fight between koba and caesar obviously caesar wins koba's about to fall off think you know caesar's gonna forgive him but he just kind of lets him go lets him drop dead in the fire was teased that koba was still breathing by the end but he doesn't come back spoilers alert i guess in war it was teased that he was still alive but i'm assuming that actor playing koba just wasn't available so and they had to shoot this three years after so it's like forget it that tease koba's dead all right and then the apes are getting prepped for war he tells malcolm and his family to you know let go and just be gone he appreciates them pretty much loves them just like he does with james Franco's character this human connection that he has it doesn't matter because if the military is coming they're not gonna want to hear from the ape they're preparing for war while malcolm and his family is long gone never to be seen again so yeah dawn is kind of like the catalyst movie to me where they had their rise this movie is the inner conflict between both species humans and apes in between each other you know within that there's a catalyst which leads to war in the next film this one's kind of like the i guess the fight the pre-fight oh hold on maybe it is just a fight where stuff happens it leads to more stuff happening because of the rise and the downfall of humanity they try to come together to a middle ground but then that won't happen because peace is never truly an option that's what will lead to war in the next movie so dawn of the planet of the apes or dawn for the planet of the apes i think either way a pretty good entry and the second one and hopefully the next entry the last one war can end off this trilogy on a good note be a planet of apes and then another three years later war for the planet of the apes was released in 2017 one thing that's a bit surprising to me is that war is through talking kind of surprised me i won't lie like oh they're doing this i don't mind it this makes sense expecting like a battle i think this is another pretty damn good entry to end off the trilogy because of the climate changes the apes need somewhere else to go and live off of the whole goal of the apes is to find an oasis a place to live in and they decide colorado and so they travel throughout the whole film because finding a middle ground peace between them and humanity is thrown out the window because it's the military the good human Human beings are part of left no more aside from mute people or mutated people and so because of that that's kind of just thrown out the window like i was kind of expecting that in this new trilogy finding like peace between humanity and the apes but it seems like that won't be possible based off of dawn and this movie it's just not possible at all all they want to do is go to one place but because the u.s army and military are there they have to deal with that as well and i'll be honest out of the trilogy this movie i have least to say about because it's the end where it goes and leads makes sense all the themes that i've said in the first two come back in here peace it's not possible that human element is possible with this mute girl this mutated girl and like i don't know like i don't know what to say about this film i really don't i guess i'll start with the enslaving with the apes again caesar thinks his tribe is going away going to colorado going to an oasis but woody harrison has his tribe building a wall and being enslaved and in this movie hearkening back to rise he gets to be in a cage once again getting to be enslaved having to work being forced to work and just seeing like the torture he has endured it's pretty tough to watch and that's also another thing i didn't expect just seeing like the vulnerability of caesar being tortured because of what happened to humanity Woody Harrison is just like yeah you know screw you you're gonna die in here alone and he sees that he is the leader he's the one that can speak and decides to break him down almost to like you know to a point where Caesar can't go back but there was at one point where I thought okay he's gonna break him down so much to a point to where he's not gonna be himself no more and it almost got there to a certain point with the help of the other apes and this mute girl that they find along the way it's like okay you know what he's all fine and then Woody Harrison himself it seems like he's having just a fun time just shooting this film he shows up shaving his head I don't know I just I just 
I just laughed out loud. I was like, man, this guy, this character, hilarious to watch. Like, he's good. Like, he has that human element side, but a different side to it, where he had to kill a bunch of kids, his own family himself, talking about how this virus has a new strain now, making people sick, making them turn mutated, just like the Butte girl. Those are the after effects. Because of this war, because of the apocalypse, humanity has been led down to this path. He's also forcing the apes to build walk because he's afraid that the US army will come to him and basically kill him as well because he left. And so he had to do all these things just to add a different side to the human element, just a different perspective as to what's going on throughout the rest of the world because it has made it easier for all of them. Like the apes are fine, but humanity has suffered throughout this whole time because of this virus. They haven't found a cure yet. And so he holds a, you know, rightful resentment towards Caesar because he caused all of this. Caesar, you know, he obviously feels bad for it, but Woody Harrison isn't going to forgive him for what he's basically done. And then one of the apes, Winter, decides to betray Caesar and them. This is the only aspect and only part where it feels weird. It's like, why have him betray them when in the end he has a change of heart? Like this felt like a, not a rush thing, but it felt like a last minute thing being like, okay, what do we need to have conflict again? Have one of the apes betray Caesar? Why? Just because only to have him, you know, have a change of heart by the end. I thought that that was useless in a way. Like I guess he saw humanity as more the dominant species, but it's like, yo, you're an ape. And they like title him donkey, which is hilarious, but it's like, I don't know. That felt kind of weird. Kind of fell off. Again, last minute things is like, okay, we'll just have an ape betray them have a change of heart save caesar in the process be a catalyst and i don't know i'm not really a big fan of that one it did what it needed to do torture caesar i don't know do some things it's just i don't know that's probably the, the one sort of negative to this film they go underground the pipes that they can escape what do harrison gets affected by the new strain of the virus because of the doll the girl brings up the doll he touches it being like whatever and he, you know he grows sick from it and it is kind of this like caesar realizes it is his fault but also does nothing and just sees him commit suicide right there and there this sad moment being like yeah he created this it is kind of his fault but you gotta do what you gotta do right just watching over him getting killed off something like that with a gunshot and then the eight start their escape they plan their adventures to colorado the oasis and they all get away not without you know one big sacrifice okay maybe not sacrifice but one big death with it being caesar himself or you know he gets shot but his injuries are too fatal to a point to where he can survive and go to oasis he gets there with his fellow ape but he dies there as well and i'm assuming they're gonna build a statue just like battle of the apes and whatnot commemorating caesar for his efforts and leading and army of apes through their freedom because that's what this whole thing's always been about freedom for the apes whether humanity liked it or not all they wanted was to live on their own not to be bothered or anything and some humans couldn't really accept that some did and some didn't care but because of that it led to the downfall of humanity post apocalypse to war to u.s army killing their own families and stuff like that so no peace for that but as long as they can fight oasis for his kind then it's gonna be all right and so caesar died looking at the sunset seeing his people be happy as the camera pans out face the black says directed by matt reeves and that's how this trilogy ends it ends on a good note it ends with caesar himself it starts with caesar and it will most definitely end with caesar with him dying with them rising creating war setting letting everyone know their placement in society having peace for them finding an oasis for his kind only to die by the end so it's a good poetic kind of end to this whole trilogy and i think war for the planet of the apes ends off this trilogy and the franchise as of right now on a pretty damn good note so hopefully there's no sequels to this uh, hopefully there's not because if there is then why would you remake planet of the apes when matt reeves trilogy is this damn good like i said at the beginning of the video do i see why as to why people see this as one of the best trilogies of all time yes this is probably up there with like the dark die and i don't know what else is there i'm forgetting trilogies but like this is up there just movies about you know being enslaved humanity know your placement in society questioning just about animals or whatnot like it's just really damn good glad i watched it i'm, I'm glad i did so that's it for me this has been the world so far and thank you for watching